we are getting faster and faster, is still valid. And Inter has internal plans for its validity, validity up to 2022, I think. So up to then, it's just a product roadmap. And then they will find something else out, I guess, personally. So they expect more slow and think of if computers are 10 times as powerful as today, what will they do, which is difficult today. <coughs> the biggest business with artificial intelligence today is textiles. Uh, we know about Google's tremendous success with this. You can look at the numbers, how much money Google is making after this. Many people want to follow that. Not so many are doing it seriously, I would say. But there's a lot of money to be done. And the only real advertising market that's growing is textiles. Um, and one reason for that, I don't know, so deep into that, but it's of course that we can get more directed ads, which have double effect, squared effect of the fact that people will buy more because it's related to them, and people will like the ads more because they are not disturbing. If I'm looking for a mobile um, phone as a, as a watch, which I was for some time ago, and I get a text ad for that, I'm happy. It's a service to me. I've been looking for it. So uh, directed ads can be good, they can also be a threat, and they can be many other things, but that's the hardest topic. And uh, it's billions only in Sweden. And one example of this is the company called Relaware, uh, which is run by a student of mine, uh, Nils Svanborg. And he um, is doing recommendation engines and he's doing text ad placement. We are also doing it through a company called Comprendo, and at some point we run half of Sweden's text ads over our system. <coughs> and that's no one knows about this, and uh, it's an example of invisible technology. Uh, but you can easily have just a server that sorts files, <coughs> and it's a plug and play solution. Just so that when you start a company, you will be small, you will have a faster technology that's easy to circumvent. And this is maybe different in Scandinavia a little bit, because for good and bad, we don't have like the Anglo Saxon court system where you can get uh, some millions because you still coffee from McDonald's. That's maybe the bad side of that system. The good side is that you can sue people if they do bad things. But in Sweden, and I guess the rest of Scandinavia, we don't have a punitive damage, which means that you can only get money for what you have lost, but you can prove that you have lost. You cannot punish someone by giving them a lot of extra fines which means that people can calculate on, 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 on tricking people. And uh, since we are paid today, I will not uh, tell you about the name of the company, but it's a big Norwegian telecom company that had some problems yesterday, I think. We had a contract with them getting half of their revenues from an SMS, and it was a little bit too con good contract, so they just ignored it. The guy that signed it had to go, we calculated that this could give us as much as 500 million Swedish pounds over 10 years. It was a too good contract, but instead of negotiating that, I just said good luck, see, see, see you in court. Uh, and uh, we said, uh, after thinking a lot, we just walk away from, from that in, in this case. Because it's too big a risk, and if we win, we will get not enough. And we have to put up with the big companies uh, uh, expense for lawyers, which can be infinite, and even if you're right, you have a big probability of losing. So um, sometimes you have to use your key and enter an office in the night, and sometimes you have to just walk away. But if this company is uh, listening, uh, there's still time to make me happy with a big, nice project. Another thing is that. As an AI company, uh, your asset is ideas and people. And most of this walks out the door every night. So your balance sheet, the 90 billion that, that Skype has, walks out the door more or less uh, every night. And you need to handle that. 
one story, and this is also a little bit inspiration of why I'm telling it. It's my, my student, Alexander Hosh. Uh, he worked, I hired him in the company uh, to work for three months, and he's a very nice guy. Uh, but uh, three months after his contract expired, I handpicked him, was the best of all my students. He was a good uh, super programmer, very clever, good business mind. So I handpicked him for this company and he worked for three months. And the day after his contract finished, he said, I will start my own company. <clears throat> and he started his own company, it's called System OK. Two years later, it was sold for 72 million Swedish pounds. Uh, I met him later and asked, well, how did you do that? Or, or, who helped you? He said, I, I did everything. I negotiated everything with this uh, buyer, which I think is amazing. I think it was 25 years old. I might be wrong, but something like that. So, um, <clears throat> this is a person that could have been helpful in our company. I'm glad for his uh, success. But you must uh, deal with the fact that artificial intelligence is about ideas and good people, and you must manage uh, that. Now, Alexander started his second company, which is called Let's Deal, and it's the biggest group on the side, where you share, uh, share these. I think it's in Norway too, I saw the, the logo. And I think his company is valued more than his uh, System of Day company. So he's a, he's a very good guy at, at business. Another important rule is, state where the puck is headed, not where it has been by the old high soccer player, Wayne Gretzky. And uh, some people that I admire, like Ray Kutschwald, has this as their motto. Uh, and it's very, very important when it comes to a field like artificial intelligence, where things are moving so quickly and computers are moving so quickly. You must think of, it will take you three years to develop your stuff, and what can computers do in three years? And what will the competitors have done? Because most people see a problem. Oh, it's a problem with copyright on, on YouTube. Uh, can we make a system that checks YouTube for copyright violations? But that's usually the wrong way to do, because then you're in competition with a thousand other people and some big companies that think the same. You should think, what, what if we have very clever video searches that can search for uh, faces in all videos and, and uh, whatnot because of, of the fact that computers will be 50 times faster in three years. Uh, and then plan your course after that. And my coach file has done this for, for 40 years and been very, very successful with, with this thought. And just for inspiration, this is a company that, that, that we started that, oops, uh, that uh, looks for your types in video, in TV, sport transmissions. Because there's a lot of money in that and you want to know where your exposure is. So you can follow up your millions of investments. And this is something that wouldn't have been possible for 10 years ago because computers were too weak. Now it's kind of easy to throw CPU cycles at the problem like that. If you want a hint for me, something to start a business in, that's completely blue ocean, meaning that there seems to be no competitors in a very good case in Europe. It's energy optimization. It's big in the US. As you know, energy companies has a lot of money. Uh, and it's a lot to do in kind of adaptive optimization of where you send the electric energy and who, what generators were started up and closed down and all that. And I don't know of any company doing this in Scandinavia and maybe not Northern Europe. I know some very successful friends I have in the US. One is living in my house right now that uh, does this. Uh, and saving half a promille is a lot of money, of course, and can also help in the stability of the network and so on. So, uh, that's just a hint. Don't think that you have to have the world's best technology. You have to have a good technology, a way to sell it, and a lot of energy. Some very successful companies have started with kind of mediocre technologies. Collect all ideas, 
artificial intelligence mode so fast, so you don't know uh, when it's a good time to take something out of the closet. I collect all my ideas, it's about 2,000 or something, uh, and when I, I had the first book was 700 ideas. And I kind of first got frustrated that, oh, now someone's starting that company, oh, now someone does uh, this crazy thing, and now someone did that. But then I realized that this is not a problem, this is a good thing. It means that you are kind of getting ideas that is possible to turn into a company. And this really no such thing as an invention in my mind. <coughs> At least not an invention, a successful invention. It's all about prediction. All the good technology will turn up sooner or later. You can maybe move that limit a few years and make money out of that or have fun out of that. But uh, you cannot really invent anything. <coughs> Everything that you think of will be thought of by someone else. So uh, <coughs> write down all your ideas and don't get frustrated if, if other successful companies show up with that idea of yours. And that means you cannot have a single idea. Write down also the crazy ideas. I wrote down bathroom cabinet camera. This is not an idea. Uh, based on you cannot criticize uh, yourself. Fifty percent of all people going into a friend's home, they look in the bathroom cabinet when they are in the toilet. Why not sell a camera and take a picture of them? Crazy idea, but uh, write down also the crazy ideas. And your brain uh, is uh, more likely to give up, come up with new ideas. I'm trying to mix, as you can see, a little bit about. Uh, how the market looks, what you should think about, with some companies that, that are interesting. And one company that is interested in is uh, uh, Recorded Future, started by Stefan Trovi and Christopher um, Holberg. Uh, Stefan Trovi was, as you know, uh, CEO of SIX before Sweden. Their idea is just to keep track of time on the internet. So it's a company, Ericsson says, in three weeks we will launch our new product. They can see, okay, when was this published? What date did they mean? Sort it, and you can then search for times uh, with temporal logic. It uh, is the first Gothenburg company that Google has invest invested heavily in. Uh, heavily in. Heavily in. Uh, and um, that's all they do. Uh, they, Stefan Trovia, and uh, so far they started Spotify before, which some of you may know of. It's a company that does uh, data analysis, mostly digital. It was sold a few years ago, and so uh, <coughs> hang around with the entrepreneurs, uh, even if you're just uh, on the board. But these guys are really good, and they have got their first customers from Spotify and from the, for the future, from the intelligence community. 